Hi, welcome to new episode of Sports Tech. Let's talk sports tech. Today we have with us two dear friends who are founders of Poker Street, Prasun Badani, Ankush Bhatia. Poker Street is an all-round place for the sport of poker in India. Start your journey with Poker Street and avail great benefits as part of the Poker Street Reward Club. Head over to their channel where they talk about poker culture, tips, strategies, music, their offers, and much more. Whether you are a no limit Hold'em fan or a pot limit Omaha fanatic, choose from a wide variety of ring games. Sit and goes and tournaments to display your skills. As they say, good luck at the table and may the flop be with you. PokerStrit.in is an online poker portal owned and operated by Rubicube Gaming Private Limited. They strive to offer their users the best and the fair experience in online gaming. The random number generator has been a certified from iTech Lab for their fair play, and their commitment to their users is to operate with the highest level of integrity. So please welcome founders of Poker Street, Prasun Badani and Ankush Bhatia, talking about how to go all in. Hey, hi Prasun and Ankush. It's uh, great to have you on Sports Tech. Let's talk sports tech. Hi, sir. Great to be here. Yes, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it it's a fun chat. Uh, just for our viewers and listeners, uh, two of my ex-colleagues, uh, great friends, and uh, Ankush just before the call started said that two of my mentors are sitting here, and I'm I'm giving an interview with two, against two of my mentors. But perfectly fine, Ankush, you are an entrepreneur, and I think I wish you all the best for the amazing journey ahead. And uh, guys, these are two co-founders of. Amazing world, which I don't understand myself personally, and I want to understand that today. Uh, it's a it's a world of poker, and we have Prasun Badani and uh, Ankush Bhatia, co-founders of Poker Street and Poker Academy. Uh, I think we will will get to hear that uh, in in the journey as well. So, guys, I want to start with whoever wants to answer this question: What is poker? So poker, in its essence, is a it's a decision making game. It's a problem solving game, very similar to uh, games like chess uh, or uh, bridge or any other uh, game where you require strategy or uh, strategy or you solve problems. So in poker, the problem is presented to you in form of cards, uh, and you work with whatever information is available to you at that instance in the game. The information could be in form of <clears throat> Uh, maths, uh, uh, the information could be in form of psychology, where you're taking reads on your opponents, how he's behaving, what what body language he's, uh, uh, what he's trying to say through his body language. And you just, based on all this, you make uh, correct decisions. Now, you, there is also an element to it where uh, there's a level of uncertainty. Now, you try to make correct decisions in short term, and in long term, your correct decisions will be rewarding. In short term, uh, the decisions might depend on the uncertainty part of the game, but in long term, it's rewarding if you follow uh, discipline, psychology, math, strategy. It's I mean, it's a very basic game. I mean, I'm trying to nerd it out, but it's a very simple game which anyone can enjoy. Yeah, honestly speaking, when when you were talking, I was thinking that you were a little nerdy sound, but I think uh, it, it, everybody in India has played cards somewhere or the other. I think this is only about the understanding that that technique part of it and. Uh, Uh, and take it forward. So, uh, so let's talk about the market in India. The world has opened for betting. World is open for fantasy. World is open for uh, gaming and everything. But we are still living in the place where uh, we are fighting for the legality of uh, fantasy or gaming or uh, game of skill or game of uh, chance and all those things, right? So, Prasun, uh, what is the legality of poker in India? And what? Yeah, actually, are the, actually, I, I just add yeah. one more part to it. Uh, other than legality, what are the challenges that you face, even if it is legal at some places? Oh, definitely. I think that's a very uh, important uh, point, uh, Sir. So the principal enactment when it comes to gaming, gambling in India, it comes from this particular law called the Public Gambling Act. This is the law that legislates betting and gambling in India. Uh, states are authorized to pass their own versions of it when it comes to uh, Uh, you know, betting and gambling, and it criminalizes betting and gambling. Okay, so let's be very clear: betting and gambling as an activity is criminalized in India. 
Now, what this law also does is it provides a very clear exemption to game of skill. Now, what is a game of skill? A game of skill is a game where the outcome is dependent preponderantly on skill and less on luck. So that is a differentiation that the court has, uh, the law does, and various courts have backed it up. So yeah. poker globally is accepted as a game of skill. Uh, it involves decision making, logical reasoning, uh, probability, mathematics, uh, reading opponents, strategizing. So that is classified glo globally. <coughs> that's classified globally as a game of skill. Now, sometimes the states uh, uh, have tried banning even games of skill. Uh, the same has been challenged in the high courts, and we've been uh, lucky that you know recently there have been a couple of interesting high court judgments where the honourable high courts of Karnataka and uh, Tamil Nadu they have overturned the ban, which was even banning games of skill. So the law in that way takes a very clear exemption to what is a game of skill, and poker in terms of the game of skill, so is legal. So that's on the legality part. Okay, interesting. Uh, so. When when it, we are talking about because it it takes time for people to understand that uh, we have seen that the the growth of Dream Eleven we have seen MPL uh, but they are also fighting at multiple places I think they have a good role to play in the, in the journey for many startups to come up uh, like Poker said so uh, I think it's, it's a good way but at the same time it's a uh, what Ankur is talking about the 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 early part which become the uncertain part I think you are exactly in the same part in the startup journey as well not only in the playing poker but also in the startup journey so i think it's a, it's a good mix when you're talking about poker street as a company but what made you uh, guys come together think of poker street as a game is what was it something that was really you were just passionate about poker as a game or you thought saw the business opportunity as well in addition to that what was the combination so ankush if you can talk, talk through us about the combination that came to you to start poker street yeah, sure. So, uh, I've been playing poker for 14 years now almost. I started back in 2008 of 1080 to game. And uh, in an instant, it was, I mean, it was an instant love. And the game stuck with me for years as a happy hobby, as a, as a sort of gym for my mind where I would just uh, relax uh, by playing poker or something. So, I've been passionate about the game, consuming a lot of content. Uh, so, it, it wasn't a surprise that I saw this as a beautiful game and I have seen the community evolve through the years. Since 2008 to now, I've seen uh, community grow step by step, uh, bit by bit. And uh, we, me and Prasoon, we also uh, used to share and discuss uh, poker as a game between us. So, uh, last year, I mean, when we were uh, speaking about this, uh, we were thinking, I mean, if the community could grow even further, can we even take it to more people, can take this game to more people? So, uh, right from our very first conversation, uh, we had the right, converse, uh, right questions in our mind as to how we can create more value, how you can add more value uh, in poker or in, uh, all, uh, to all stakeholders. I mean, not players, uh, affiliates, or people who are associated in poker in any way. So, we always uh, thought about how we can create. And that's how, I mean, when we knew that we, there is gap in market and we have ideas and we have passion to fill those gaps. That, that's how it started. And uh, our uh, main intent is to uh, educate uh, more people about the game. So, and you know, keep innovating to actually keep offering a better poker playing experience to play. Interesting. Uh, so, guys, this is as as we know, this is, this is going it's going to be or this is purely B two C play. And it has to have the masses coming on. So education becomes a very important part to tell them why this is legal. Tension mat lo. Up. And this is not complete chance. This is not matka. This is not gambling. This is actually you're strategizing the whole thing. So uh, all, I have always heard uh, about poker is having a poker face. Okay, that's that's one of the life skill to have a poker face. Uh, Ankush is giving that in between uh, while while speaking, but that's fine. But we are talking about having having that kind of life skill. But uh, Prasun, if what are the poker skills that actually can be used in real life as well? Because other than giving a mystic poker space a uh, face, what are the other skills that you feel that are going to improve? Because see, we talk about uh, on field game that improves our uh, ref reflex time or our fitness or every every sport is has something else. This is also a sport, but played or, or a game played differently. But it has got psychological thing. It has got tactical thing. So, what are the life skills that actually can be aligned with poker? 
Absolutely. I think it's a brilliant question uh, said. So I'll I'll give an example. So like when a student starts preparing for competitive uh, exams, whether it's MBA or any other professional course, uh, the topics that they usually judged on in the written exams are your quantitative skills, that's your mathematical uh, skills, your data interpretation, your logical view. Uh, these are the things that uh, are inherent part of a poker game because your universe is defined into a pack of 52 cards and that's where all your mathematical skills come into question. Uh, you're taking decisions under pressure. Uh, let's shift it to a corporate uh, example. <clears throat> when you play poker, you're starting with a bankroll. Uh, you have to maximize your earnings while taking risk and you have to prevent going bust. Now, that's the kind of entrepreneurial thinking that is really important in a company where you need people to handle autonomous projects because these are the people who are leading your teams, managing budgets, handling pressure, taking decisions. So that's one part of it. The other important thing that poker teaches you is the differentiation between process versus outcome. Like a lot of times, uh, you and I have seen it in the corporate world where uh, sometimes you take a wrong decision, but the outcome is good and you're rewarded and things are rushing into the corporate. Uh, sometimes uh, team members take the right decision uh, as per the process, but the outcome is uh, wrong for something beyond their control. And they have to again get uh, maybe stigmatized or maybe put down that, okay, fine, because of you, this happened. So unfortunately, uh, we are currently in a state where the result is given more uh, importance than the, uh, than the process. Poker changes it completely. So in poker, if you're not process oriented, the result in the long term will never be in your favor. So it's extremely important to follow the process. That's the thinking uh, in life that can get you. The other aspect that's important is handling failures and losses. Like you don't always win in a game of poker, but uh, does that mean you get up, walk away, throw away your process and get out of there? No. So you have to believe in the process to keep learning, keep improving. And when that happens, even if you face a few losses along the way, uh, you take it in the stride and you move on because you know that your process is right and you're improving yourself. Uh, when we talk about losses, also important to talk about winning because winning is always something that gives you thrill. It gives you that added feeling of, uh, wow, I've won something. And that feeling is important. I think every once in a way, everyone deserves to have that feeling. And every time you win a game in poker by following the right process, the kind of satisfaction you get is a massive boost to your self-confidence. And that, I think, is another aspect of poker, which sometimes gets overlooked when we keep talking about process, skill, and, but the simple fact that you're winning and you feel good about it. And that's extremely good because he could do with a lot of that confidence boost around. So that's uh, something that we feel that, you know, that's a nice skill in poker. In, interesting. Uh, so, but uh, person, as, as, as a game, uh, it, the, the most important part of a game is the versus likability or ease of playing. Uh, yeah. Do you think that with so many things around, poker has that ease of play that for people to get into or it actually has a process? for me to learn uh, and if you look at it, what is the dropout ratio that you usually get to see when uh, somebody starts learning and probably bhai, ye liye bought up, hai, nahi jump hai. And, and, and drop out. What is the typical uh, situation when the, the going gets tough? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, when people, when anyone, when you and I also do something without the right skill set and we don't get the result in our favor, we tend to say, okay, fine, all this is good. Crypto is not for me. Stock market is not for me. Mutual fund is risky. Uh, yes, I mean, these are risky things. There is an element of risk involved in it. But it's important to educate. So we've seen that gap. What you're saying is right. Today in the B schools, poker is extremely popular. I, mean, I would go on to say that poker is more popular than Rummy and fantasy on the B schools today. I mean, I'm talking about... Uh, all the B schools that we keep interacting with. But yes, uh, there is a dropout ratio and there's a big gap. So that's why we, we will be launching Poker Street Academy very soon, where it gives you a very easy to learn uh, experience. Like you say, poker is a sport which takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. So we want to give that one minute to the people who want to learn poker and we want to give that lifetime to the people who want to learn poker. So Poker Street Academy will be having structured courses, uh, both free and paid where you learn poker in a very quick way. You can get into advanced studies and uh, then there will be discussions, there'll be mentoring sessions with the coaches. So depending on how you want to take your journey to poker, you want to support it because the dropout rate, unfortunately, is high. 
and it's primarily because of the skill element involved in it. Had it been luck, people would keep trying. It's like sitting on a roulette table. You lose 10 times, you still want to go 10 times. But in poker, once you lose after the skill not being there, you tend to get up. So you want to address that gap by plugging the skill education on it. Interesting. I think uh, that's a bit, very good fundamental of any ecosystem, right? Building the right pyramid. So by by adding the poker stick academy, you are actually building the grassroots. If you talk, talk about our sporting language, the grassroots yeah. from there, there will be a participative sport to amateur to elite. I think it's a it's a nice pyramid that will get built with the academy. And I think that so for a lot of entrepreneurs uh, who are listening to this, I think one thing uh, you guys thinking right. I feel personally uh, working with so many startups uh, in sports technology and other. I think uh, the thought through ecosystem that I don't want to be dependent on something else outside. I will build a self-sufficient ecosystem. Right? That is something great. But for that, you must have done some research about the poker industry as such. So what is the typical size of poker industry we're talking about? Okay. So it's small, it's small to be honest. Uh, if you look at it today, we would be having around 3 million active poker players in India. Now, in a country like India, that's very less. But at the same time, that's the opportunity. Uh, because fantasy goes on to claim that we'll be getting 150 million. But yes, there are industry researchers that have suggested that the sum total of real money gamers in India stands at around 150 million. And the total number of gamers in India, online gamers, people who play online games, that number would be crossing 400 million in this month. So it's our journey from this 3 million active poker players to the 150 million real money gamers to the 400 million online gamers. That's the opportunity that's there in front of poker. Oh, nice. That is, that's a, that's a, and, and just to add, it's growing, poker today is growing at uh, 35 to 40% uh, year on year. Oh, wow. That is also, and I'm sure it's going to grow faster the more and more player comes in and I think the adaptability and for that, I, I, honestly speaking, poker state is one, but I'm actually more excited about the poker state academy. Uh, because that is the, that's the foundation of how you get built things. So, Ankush, uh, uh, when we talk about the industry, we always need to understand the job opportunities or career opportunities. So being poker, uh, playing poker for profession or having opportunities, in, what kind of job opportunities are there in the market uh, for uh, for gaming? Or or can you actually be, and is being a pro poker professional player, is, is it something real? Yes. Uh, so addressing the first part of your question, um, the job, you see, if I was someone looking for uh, looking to for working, I would be really excited this stage. In last five years, last five to six years, industry has gone gone up so much in terms of uh, number of opportunities available. Plus, uh, the kind of work you, you get to do in the industry right now, uh, sports industry is actually in our hands. I mean, each and every person working in the gaming industry is in our hands, and we can uh, decide how we want to shape. We can put in our ideas and uh, shape and. Be it in whatever department, be it in product designing, uh, product management, social media. Uh, you, we right now need gaming specialists, uh, people to take over the industry and uh, for youngsters to take up uh, specialization in uh, games so that they can help, <coughs> they can help the sh shape, they can help shape the industry better and uh, just put in their ideas and there is a lot of scope for innovation and work and uh, as the industry keeps growing and the opportunities will keep growing as well. Nice. So my second part is you've been playing for the last 14 years. Uh, I, with looking at your age, playing 14 since probably this is like you're playing since school days. But let's let's not talk about that right now. But <laughs> uh, what so I want to say is that uh, is is it real? Actually, can convert into a proper profession being a poker player? Okay, for legal reasons, I would like to mention that yes, I have been playing this is the age 16, but uh, I was playing with play money, not real money when I was 16. So yes, uh, coming to the second part of the question, yes, absolutely. Poker is a real professional opportunity right now. Just to quote uh, some uh, numbers here without any names, there are professional poker players who are making uh, north of five to six crores a year playing poker wow. in India. Yeah, and that's just the, their income through only through Indian ecosystem. Uh, they do go out of Indian they play international tournaments as well, but this is just uh, their uh, income out of the Indian poker poker system and. It can go up to that limit and it can start uh, as low as 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 per month as well. Depending on uh, how much uh, you have learned the game, how much time you have put in the game and uh, how much discipline and uh, do you have, how many hours do you have to put in the game. 
so oh. for some people uh, who are looking at this profession they do look at it as a side hustle as well i mean they do a uh, 9 to 5 uh, which they like and they come back home and they dedicate 4 hours to poker where they can make a decent 20 30 40 uh, thousand as a side hustle which i mean many player uh, some did dream to become a full time poker player and for a full time poker player who's uh who has this process is right who is learning the game studying the game regularly it's very easy for for him to make somewhere around 3 to 4 lakhs a month uh playing uh, game in between but not to take away from uh, the recreational part of the game uh it's not that uh, it's a upsc exam where you have to study for one year and you have to lock yourself in a room and study so hard but it's i mean the game can be enjoyed simply by common sense as well uh the game can be enjoyed If you, if you just have a curious and you were asking about the dropout ratio, if you have a curious and analytical mind, you'll never go out of poker. When see you, if you lose, you'll see where the leaks in my game are, where the gaps in my game are. And if you are winning, you'll still want to keep improving that. How how can I maximize this? So if you have a curious mind, there is no uh, dropout. Interesting, interesting, and. Uh... just to uh, just for the viewers uh, that the one of the relation that we all three have is uh, working with uh, and for ms dhoni and that's what uh, that's where we all met and that's where uh, we were in the same team and uh, i think what ankur is talking about is something i can relate to the to the thing that when he was working at kharagpur went ahead and played a tennis ball tournament to brush his skills so i think this is the kind of parallel analogy when you have when you have a 9 to 5 job still go ahead and play the night tournaments and uh, uh, brush up your skills start earning some money till you become a professional i think there's a uh, for people to understand the real analogy i think i thought of just bringing that point out uh, i think it's it uh, you can correct me if i'm wrong but i think that could be a right analogy uh, to give people confidence that bhai ye ho sakta hai so that's actually the perfect oh, it's analogy it's actually true yeah, yeah in fact, uh, you know it's actually true yeah it's actually true is it very impressive because we've been talking to a lot of people who started playing poker especially post the pandemic so what's happened uh, is i'll just give an example of one very close uh, uh, poker player that we've come to know of late so he is a boy from a tier 2 town uh, unfortunately when he completed his uh, engineering pandemic was in full flow and he was a tier 2 guy so opportunities were not limited he is not even be to mumbai or delhi ever in his own lifetime So what he did was he started playing poker. He started looking at videos. He started learning, getting better. And today he is very happy with the fact that what he makes out of poker is something uh, which is five times what his uh, annual, annual package out of campus will be. And he is a tier two guy. He learned it by himself, purely on his self determination and grit. So India has got a lot of these stories from tier two and tier three where opportunities are not so handy and poker has become. Uh, online skill gaming i would say has become one such recourse where you can make it big using your skill and the platform is given to you so i think that's a brilliant uh, thing that's happening in india today and we would just be happy to be part interesting interesting i think it uh, it gives a uh... uh some some more validation to also what i was thinking about it uh, i have interviewed couple of esports player uh, playing uh, pubg and uh, clash clash royale and all those things and they say that uh, rat ko college mein baithe baithe chalu kiya khelne ka and then now they are the professionals and having the uh, few thousand few hundred thousand or million followers and having the tick marks and earning quite a decent money in india within the span of 2 to 3 years i think that that's where the way esport took up picked up i think the poker has a way to go because again it's skills it is something that you are getting involved with uh, i think it's it's a great place uh, honestly speaking i'm i'm jo- the, i know prasun you have called me for in person training but i also i'm interested in taking that thing up uh, from the uh, what ankur talking about from analytical thinking tactical thinking or probably trying to understand ki how do we go beyond just having a poker face which i can probably learned early in my life so uh, that is uh, amazing so just to on the closer closing point guys uh, is uh, that two two points one is just to clarify uh, again reiterate the point that this is not only place to make money this is a game that you actually play so can you validate that thought that this this is the place not only to make money and actually have a something more than that absolutely uh, said in fact it's very important to keep that in mind because if you're looking at it as only as a way to make money then you're making the cardinal sin in poker you're looking at the outcome not looking at the process so definitely yes money is the outcome process is more important i'll give another example so when you go to disneyland for example right you take part in the carnival games 
Uh, you played. You whether you win or not, you come back happy. This is why you took. You went to a carnival. You played the games. You did a ring toss. Whether you won or not, you were happy. So look at poker like that. Look at poker as a way to have a good time. So if you are playing for an art, have a good time. Play responsibly. There are certain modules that we are we always stress upon uh, when we talk about coaching. Uh, one of them is bankroll management. The other one is responsible gaming. Because bankroll management is important. Uh, you only play poker because. Because of the riskiness of it, the inherent risk in the game. You only play with the money you are afford to let go. Ah, uh, you're looking at playing money with the money that you're investing in the sport, and that's very important. Ah, uh, the other part is responsible because, ah, uh, see, I mean, these games, as per the law, can be only played by people who are above eighteen years of age. There is an element of risk, so it is important that the responsibility is understood. so not just looking at the money part look at it for the personal growth look at it for the thrill look at it for the chill look at it for the skill that's what uh, we always uh, keep telling people interesting and i think that is what all in is all about right uh, so uh, amazing uh, amazing uh, guys i i usually when i'm talking to startups uh, or the technology startup i always want to ask them what is one thing the uh, what is the growth mechanism that you're looking at how do you plan to because a b2c market so you have to have a multiple multiplier growth so what is your what is it a, a strategy which is which can be expressed uh, i know there are a lot of confidential thing when it, in the startup world but uh, something that is you want to share with because there are so many founders or startup guys listening to this so it might help them as well in in, in strategizing their own ways so there is something that we spoken a lot about in the industry peers about not so because we are only 3 million it doesn't make sense to compete with each other i mean we should all be focusing on growing this 3 million to 30 million and then getting it to that 150 million so that poker becomes a larger subset of the overall uh, real money gaming uh, users in india so our efforts are towards that so our strategy if you ask me today is to grow the ecosystem we we focused on getting the poker street academy out and that way yes uh, it's about educating people removing that stigma of are yaar ye to jua hai so it's not gambling it's gaming it's skill gaming so these are the basic things and honestly poker is at its place right now that we just have to take care of the basic things and uh, trust that you know the process takes care of itself so again we are following the same principles of focusing on the process and not looking at the outcome the industry is going at 35 45% so by following the process route uh, right if you are able to grow at a faster pace then i think we would have done a pretty decent job of uh, contributing to this ecosystem excellent uh, so uh, ankush on last question for you from my side uh, for for the closing it's a platform it's something that people are going to play with so how do you give some confidence to the people that poker street is a secure and safe platform for people to come and play so yeah so security uh, is uh, something which is most relevant to people who have who are outside of poker right now who are being introduced to poker right now because when they have to put in their real money into their uh, user balance that's where the concern comes that i am giving out my details i'm using my card and same with the withdrawal process while withdrawal process we ask for their information pan aadhar uh to verify that it's an authentic user and their bank details to transfer the money to their account so yes it is a concern for a new user who is new, new to gaming or new to poker that i am is this a safe place to that's one part of the concern and uh, that's where we come with our uh, five layer of security where uh, we put in two uh, we make sure that the user information is locked with us and it it never goes out to anyone else it always stays between us and user and only for transactional purposes uh, nothing else that's how we take care of that part the second part of the security is when user gets on the table he needs to feel that it's a fair experience he needs to know that it's a fair playing experience the cards are not being and we listen uh, we have a random numbers generator i mean the way the cards are generated and we have certificate from uh, the one of the world's top uh, rng agencies rng verification agency itech lab australia we take in the certification so that part is secure the third part of security is the people i'm playing with uh, on the table i mean uh, those those are real people and not some computer bots i'm not playing against the computer i'm playing against real people that's where our fraud management system comes in that you cannot attach any third party software when our app is running you cannot have any poker supporting software we have a list of uh, 358 uh, softwares which gets blocked while our app is running 
so uh, in every way we have tried to make sure that a user gets a fair playing uh, experience and he gets a secure uh, experience during transactions as well interesting and this is something uh, probably i think very important for people to understand that uh, it's, it's a secure platform it is something where i can go in uh, and not somebody is there and I, it's a fair play i think you you put out a very important point which is fair play uh because something when i'm on the phone or laptop i don't even know who is there on the other side so i think it's a fair play uh that is something very crucial so i i think this this gives me a complete picture uh about other than playing how to play i think i got everything else which was required for that i think the focus academy is something i'm looking forward to or uh, uh, coming coming over to your office uh, to have that one on one session uh to to make i think uh, get get hooked to it and uh, for probably one day that i also say all in looking forward to that yes thank you guys thanks for your time it was lovely talking to you catching up uh, again on uh, virtually but uh, let's 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 catch up uh, offline the asap thank you for having us here said the absolute pleasure and wish you all the best uh, we've been seeing the amazing work that you've been doing uh, crossing i think what 150 episodes now uh that that is soon but right now at around 120 125 okay. so yeah 150 and then hopefully seeing the double 100 uh, pretty soon double 100 in cricket is always special yes yes it's uh, thank you for that and uh, uh, let uh, let's make sure the poker street is there for people to understand and actually uh, take it beyond playing to their life skills uh, as as you said so uh, looking forward to that thank you and take care thank you have a nice day thank you guys Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, and thank you for sharing. But please do subscribe to our channel, Sports C Says, and help us spread the word about Sports C. We go with the same handle, Sports C Says, across all the social media platforms and podcasts. And don't forget to press on the bell icon.